Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, welcome to the 2020 summer webinar series for the Telex Radio Dispatch Box. My name is Greg Compagnon. I am the North American Director for Telex Radio Dispatch, along with the RTS Intercom products. On behalf of everyone here at Bosch, we hope you're all well and safe during uh, these uncertain COVID times. So let's talk about some objectives of what we're going to be looking at today. The Telex Radio Dispatch Portfolio, this is a little bit of an overview today. So we'll go through that. We'll talk about the Bosch family and how we're part of Bosch and um, how Telex can work for you in your projects going forward and what our, our products offer to make your life a little bit better. My name is Greg, as I mentioned, Greg Compagnon. Uh, I've been with Telex uh, since 2006. We were acquired shortly thereafter by the Bosch Group. Um, I started on the audio side with Electra Voice and Dynacord. I have a passion for music, and then I got into the broadcast uh, division, and then now with Telex Radio Dispatch. So um, some of you may know my team, uh, Craig Georgeson, Julio Ibanez, along with John Anderson. Those are all my sales uh, district managers that are spread out throughout the country. A little bit later, we'll talk to Larry Benedict, the uh, product manager, and Greg Donaski will be doing the presentation for us. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, Telex and who we are and uh, a little bit about the Bosch Group. In 2006, we were acquired by the Bosch Group. This is Robert Bosch Global, the same Bosch that you know probably from power tools, household appliances, or even auto parts. You know, one of the uh, little tidbits that I like to re remind everyone is there's not a car on the planet that doesn't have at least one Bosch part on it or some piece of Bosch technology in it. So that's kind of a neat little thing. We're an 88.5 billion USD uh, U.S. dollar sales revenue in 2019, and we have many divisions across the globe, and we are part of the energy and building technology division. When you look at building technologies for North America, you will see security cameras, uh, fire and intrusion and access panels. Um, our sister brand, ElectroVoice, is part of our install and pro audio sound and the Dynacord amplifiers and processing is part of our electronics. And then as I mentioned earlier, I look after the RTS intercom products that uh, all make up the communications division of the building technologies uh, umbrella for North America. And you can see them represented here where Telex and RTS actually fall within the entire building technology division. Robert Bosch is a pretty big organization uh, worldwide. We have manufacturing plants all across the, the globe. And especially during these times of COVID when the entire uh, pandemic started in uh, China back in uh, January, we never saw a uh, disruption in our supply chain because of the power and the size of Bosch Global. We have manufacturing plants all across the globe. Here's a representation of all of the manufacturing plants that we have, as well as our headquarters throughout the globe. So Larry Benedict uh, has been with Telex Communications for 32 years. Uh, he's worked in the electronics industry, focused on land mobile radio, broadcast, and audio applications. He holds a general radio telephone and extra class amateur radio FCC licenses. His 25-year career here at Bosch has spanned in, uh, over many roles, including engineering, sales, support, marketing, and management. In addition, he has 12 years experience as a volunteer EMT. Larry's our product manager, senior product manager, and he is based at our communications headquarters in the Minneapolis region in Burnsville, Minnesota. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Larry. He's going to start us off. And then eventually we'll get to Greg Donaski doing the presentation today for the portfolio. Thanks. Uh, as Greg mentioned, we were, we were brought into the Bosch fold in 2006, late 2006. And uh, as you can see in this slide, you don't take a company the size of Telex and just instantly say, well, you're part of Bosch. So it took a couple of years, but we were, we were finally completely in the Bosch fold as of 2009. 
we go way, way back. We have been uh, in the business for over 55 years, uh, starting out as Vega uh, Electronics or Vega Signaling uh, out in California. And uh, we've, got a, we've got a rich history. We introduced the first IP radio gateway in the market in 2003. And we've sold over 30,000 IP console systems since then. Uh, we probably have the most, by, by sheer count, radio interfaces available in the marketplace. I say probably because, you know, day to day. But as of last count, we did. And we have systems installed in all the different verticals. We really do. We touch everything from energy to transportation, in public safety, government, forestry, land management. You name it, we probably can point to a system that we have in a particular vertical or sub-vertical. And now I want to turn it over to Greg Donaski, who is our Senior Applications Specialist. Greg has over 36 years of experience in uh, electronics, including six years with the Navy. And, and you could see from his changing picture that that many years in the radio industry will do something to you. Um, he's been with Bosch for 30 years um, through Telex. And now I'll turn it over to Greg. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, most of you or large majority of the people I'm sure on board have uh, are on uh, this uh, WebEx have talked to me or been present in one of my training classes over the years. So as Larry talked, verticals, I, we are across a very wide breadth of products or uh, our products are across a wide breadth of verticals. Uh, um, it's quite interesting when you see all the different uh, um, markets and uh, uh, installs that we have done, our, our dealer base has done over the years, and not only the, in the U.S., but around the world. I think I did a count, and we were across either four or five continents with product installed in, in different operations around the world. And, and this is just a small snippet of the largest uh, verticals that you might uh, find us in. So radio manufacturers. You know, all of the key radio manufacturers out there, we've either uh, a working relationship with, integrated uh, to their uh, radio systems or even uh, mobile radios for a control station type uh, interface. So, you know, BK, Codan, uh, formerly Daniels Radio, the EF Johnson, Kenwood, um, uh, Harris, ICOM, so Motorola, all of them, we've got a, a good uh, working relationship with. And then when you start to talk about radio technologies, you know, P25, of course, being the largest in the U.S., and after that, you get into DMR technologies, whether it's Moto Turbo or true uh, uh, other DMR makers. Um, Next Edge, we do some Tetra work uh, and uh, EDAX through some or for some of the older uh, uh, Harris style radios. Uh, probably the biggest thing I'd like to say is, is that over the last couple of years, we've really integrated with a lot of IP recorder companies. Um, there is no uh, additional licensing from us to uh, record our packets. Um, we've gone out and actively uh, give, uh, permitted or licensed uh, our structure to these recorder companies. So it gives a really, uh, you can see that uh, um, because of the verticals and the different customers we have, they have so many different recorders that in, uh, we've partnered with just about any, everybody who um, would walk up and say, hey, we'd really like to record your packets. We have a, a shared customer. So Unified Communications Console, of course, it can bring in phone system, intercom systems, mission critical push to talk, radio, PA, access control, video or CCTV, and intrusion systems. These are just some of the, the basic things that have been uh, brought together into a, a console system, more centralize your dispatcher's operations into a single screen. So key system features, you know, it's flexible. That's probably the biggest thing we've always touted. Um, we sell piece parts. Um, it doesn't take a, a large backroom server or central electronics equipment bay to, to make our system run. Everything is an individual piece. Uh, we uh, use standard Windows OSs and uh, PCs. 
Uh, we're using normal uh, TCP or IP Ethernet, and uh, it expands as your system grows. All of a sudden, you need to add another console, or you need to add some more radios. Your um, uh, area coverage expands, or you start to become a um, a backup or a consolidated dispatch center for a multiple uh, re, uh, entities. Uh, it's quite easy to expand uh, using uh, Telex Dispatch. Centralized uh, configurations and upgrades, network monitoring capabilities. There are um, a, a SNMP that we support. Um, we're all software-based license, which makes it easy to do a, a number of things with CSOF licensing, uh, whether it's uh, installing a license on the dedicated machine or using a licensed server to host. It's really quite flexible. Reliability. It's all end-to-end -end, uh, IP-based, um, built-in uh, failover redundancy, so the gateways uh, all have a dual Ethernet, which allow you to have uh, uh, an additional network uh, backhaul. So if your primary uh, path uh, were to be disrupted, you can have a secondary path. We really work hard to limit any single point of failure, and uh, it's a distributed architecture it's purely, you know, uh, comes down to a, a cost benefit. How much do you want to put into your redundancy is truly up to you. It's not mandated by us. Uh, future proof, there's no planned obsolescence. We've gone from um, IP223s to IP224s. We've gone from one CSOF to the next CSOF. They're all backwards compatible. Today's CSOF will still operate 223s. Um, and uh, 223s can still talk to 224s. Uh, so there's really no planned obsolescence. Um, we add features all the time. Uh, interfaces are always increasing. Um, and uh, we try to work on hardware and software implementation that works for today and tomorrow. So what does a typical dispatch position look like? So course, it's, you know, always a monitor, uh, it's uh, speakers, and then you get into some of the core stuff. It's a Windows PC. Now, over the years, we've had, uh, you, you had to be very careful about the Windows PC and the embedded sound chipset or the sound card. Uh, we created our ADHB4 a number of years ago. Of course, we're on our newest one, our Gen 2, which has a few features. And um, the ADHB4 takes all your standard dispatcher accessories, uh, the heavier duty stuff that works, you know, that's expected to uh, handle the abuse of 24 seven by 365 day abuse. Um, and it converts it over to um, uh, communication that the computer uses uh, uh, to, uh, for audio routing um, out to the system. So it's done over a USB cable. The, the beauty of the HB4 is, is your PCs uh, age, the leases expire, um, you want to trade them out. Uh, you don't have to worry about the uh, uh, PC specs and the onboard sound because all of the uh, audio um, uh, processing is being done in the HB4. So that's the beauty to the HB4. So typically, get a little closer. Fully customizable screen design, um, being in tech support, training, uh, all of that, I see so many different designs. It is clearly up to the uh, integrator, uh, end user um, to make design changes, make them function the way they want, um, make it resemble as close to what they may be replacing. So they can really um, decrease uh, uh, training start times. If you can make something that looks really close to what you have today um, and uh, decrease how long it takes to train your staff, great. So multiple configurations. You can have different uh, design files for a supervisor. You can have a different one if you're a district or you can break it down into regions, jurisdictions, maybe even just a shift. Maybe the designs uh, change, uh, uh, you know, after hours dispatching, all of a sudden it goes from 12 lines of radio control to 24 because you 
after hour, you take on more um, uh, resources. And then, of course, uh, we can bring in um, phone integration using SIP uh, of VO, VOIP capabilities, or uh, um, even if you had a uh, 911 desk phone uh, sitting next to it, you can integrate that into the system so they can wear one dispatcher headset and use two uh, resources. So when we talk about consoles, lots of features. Um, a and I, an alias display. A and I comes in on a line. It can cross-reference it to an alias. You can change channels, group call, private calls. You can get emergencies, alert tones, marker tones, uh, remote radio check, cross-patching, uh, patching of two different radio circuits together, um, paging, uh, text messaging. Uh, uh, the features are endless. Um, and if you guys uh, uh, have time and you tune in to tomorrow, uh, there'll be a little more about Seasoft uh, on the same uh, uh, at the same time tomorrow. But just trying to show you an idea of all the different features that we support, whether it's a, uh, a control station interface using uh, IP 224s, 223s. We also have direct IP interfaces. We have again the third-party IP recorder, and then we also have a uh, CAD or an API interface option that can be purchased for the dispatch position. So you can integrate CAD, you can integrate any number of third party applications and um, uh, control CSOFT remotely. Again, as I said, CSOFT dispatcher application comes in so many different screen designs. I just captured a few um, that have come through my desk. Um, as you can see, they can be very simple, they can be very complex, they can be very colorful. It's purely up to um, the, the time and the effort anyone puts into a design and or the feature set needed. The next big picture or piece that goes into a um, dispatch position, of course, is the ADH before the remote headset box, your typical uh, uh, interface for all your dispatcher accessories. And then finally, we get into the IP224, which is our um, uh, current gateway, supports uh, two devices per unit. They can be radios, they can be two four wire circuits, E and M. Um, it's got, it has dual ethernet ports, so you can have a primary and a backup ethernet connection to it. Supports a wide range of uh, serial controlled radios. So what is a typical dispatch look like or deployment look like. We have a dispatch center going to the network. Somewhere on the network, we have IP224 controlling a, uh, a portable or mobile radio, I'm sorry, a mobile radio in a control station format. Maybe it's a direct IP uh, interface uh, for DFSI to a P25 conventional system. We also can use the uh, DFSI to talk to a RIC M, which will control a Motorola P25 conventional system. We've got direct IP uh, next edge for Kenwood conventional and trunked. We've got a direct IP DMR AIS for DMR systems in conventional mode. Uh, I believe there were uh, even some uh, uh, systems that have been tested in the trunk format. And then, of course, we have CSSI, which gives us a uh, direct IP connection into P25 trunk systems. So that would be your typical radio interfaces out of CSOFT. What does a deployment really look like on average? One console to any number of consoles in a dispatch center. We add the network. Then we add IP224s, and they're either in tone mode, controlling a tone controlled radio or uh, an analog radio, or we're using control stations um, to access the radio system. And then finally, we'll add a SIP server um, and attach our phone lines to that, and that's how we would bring telephony into the dispatch console. So what's coming soon um, is our uh, new PC. We expect this in the next uh, month or two. It's our new uh, um, fanless 
uh, compact size. It's not much bigger if you've experienced our current, uh, what we call our 4108 or Kohler PC. Um, it's just slightly bigger than the existing PC we have today, but it's completely fanless. Um, very heavily tested, probably our most in-house tested. We, for anybody who might have experienced uh, um, uh, issues with the previous generation, uh, this one has been tested and retested and uh, has the most uh, in-house certifications we've probably ever done on our own PC. And it will come preloaded with CSoft and the Telex license app tool Telex System Manager, and then this one comes with the Seneca Backup and Restore software, which offers more features than the older um, uh, backup uh, recovery software. This one, you'd actually be able to create restore points after you've installed CSoft licensing and done all your latest Windows updates. You could create a restore point. You can create uh, restores um, that you can uh, store on a, a network drive. Um, just allows you to be able to uh, recover machines if there's ever been a uh, um, hardware failure. Very nice, sweet machine. So, so Greg, you asked me to comment about that. Um, I am told that that machine should be orderable by no later than the end of September, and we actually uh, have our fingers crossed that it will be before then. Uh, I know there's a number of customers out there that would like to get their hands on one of these today. It is a very sweet machine. And as he said, we have tested it uh, probably 10 times more than any machine has ever been tested. I think we did everything but try and set fire to it. Um, so it, it is a very robust design, and I think people will be pleased once they get one in their hands. Um, these are some key things here I wanted to uh, um... Today, with uh, uh, the COVID environment the way it is, it's best to use group emails. Uh, it goes to multiple people this way with inside our uh, organization. When you send an email to the sales team, Telex Dispatch, all the sales guys, including Greg Campion uh, and, and a number of other people get those emails. So if somebody's out of pocket or uh, just unavailable, at least you'll get a response in a, in a timely order. Same thing, there's a order desk email, um, technical support, uh, email for tech support, and if you need to send anything in for repair, the parts and repair department, and then, of course, our website. And I just want to add that uh, anyone, if somehow we missed your question or didn't completely answer it, you, you're looking for a little more detail, yeah, please send us an email. Uh, I know that I saw at least one question that, um, having to do with support that it's just not very clear. And so, uh, yeah, please, please email us and, and we'll try and answer your question uh, better.